Now, here comes the music. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm also joined by other DJs. We're here with you. It's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable Show. Here I have DJ Fire, Nathan, as well as Matt, DJ Solsis, both big YouTubers. <laughs> and if you haven't done so already, make sure you go to their YouTube channels, also Instagram and other social media. Click on subscribe and follow them because they have a lot of great information. Uh, Matt has some great gig logs with some crazy, crazy uh, stuff going on there. And then the other thing really is that, crappy one too. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt not only does DJ, but he also does product reviews too. And mm -hmm. uh, he just had a product review up just a bit ago for a, a chainsaw, a little electric 20 volt chainsaw, which was pretty cool. Need to do some, you know, household uh, work, had to get some little uh, branches down, stuff like that. Great little tool to have. Um, and if you're looking for one, check out his, his review. So I want to thank you guys for coming in tonight. And uh, I know we had uh, last week off because of uh, Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys all have a pleasant and happy turkey day and ate lots of turkey and got to see friends and family. Uh, wanted to talk about a few things. And actually, this is because of DJ Fire talking about it and also because of the time of year. As we're getting closer and closer to the Christmas of 2022. So if you're watching this in 2023, 2024, you can also down below the talk about it on YouTube uh, here on on uh, Twitch. If you see it tonight, you guys can talk about it. Um, but as we're getting closer and closer and closer to Christmas of 2022, uh, mm -hmm. COVID is rearing its ugly head uh, in China. They have a zero COVID policy versus here uh, in the United States. We we combat it and we don't want people to get sick. You know, they tell you to do things to reduce your chances, including, you know, uh, precautions and so forth and so on. The thing is that in China, they have a zero COVID policy, which they're locking things down and stopping things from um, working. And that's, cre that's creating another supply chain uh, issue. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what you're ordering and what is happening with the supply chain are you seeing stuff coming in i know uh matt i know you ordered some stuff and i know uh nathan he gets a lot of stuff to review uh but one of the manufacturers deal with uh sheds lighting uh they can't give anything because of their plants are closed down right now in china and i was wondering what you guys are seeing out there because i know what i'm seeing for some stuff and i actually just made a phone call today to sweetwater for some stuff and found out some of the things I wanted to get, I couldn't get. So what are you guys seeing? Matt? Uh, I was going to talk, but I didn't know Matt was going to talk. Um, <laughs> other than, other than uh, you know, Shed's told me, like, I'm supposed to be getting some more stuff for them for, uh, for product reviews. And I always just check up with Ava. And because she always sends it towards the, you know, middle end of the month. And I hadn't got, you know, email or anything saying, hey, we've sent this. So I checked up with her and she said, yeah. She said, I, I put the order in two weeks ago, but we are on lockdown here uh, and it's crazy. Um, I didn't even know how crazy it was getting because of the way uh, I watched the world news last night and they were showing um, people getting arrested for going outside and not listening to the, the law. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. You know, they're, they're getting fed up with all of it over there. And it's it's like the law is trying to control them, saying you have to stay in your home. Mm -hmm. You know, but she told me, like, I didn't know they were, it was that bad over there again. And I told Ava, she's like, uh, I put the order in, but I don't know when you'll get it. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And she's like, because none of our employees can get to work. And I was like, why? Like, is, is there something going on? Is there a bad storm? And she said, because of, you know, the pandemic COVID crap over there. So she said that, you know, but then she messaged me this morning and said that they were able to get a couple people into work, but they're backed up from, they, you know, they've got that 15% sale going on right now. And they're, you know, just, you know, backed up from Black Friday and Cyber Monday and, you know, 
I do know uh, one of my friends, uh, those waterproof lights I got, uh, he actually seen my video and went and bought like 18 of those. They're doing some sort of Christmas light deal outside, I think it was, and wanted to uh, do some cool stuff with the park waterproof lighting around the pond for the Christmas. Uh, it's like at a park where you drive through, and I think it's a couple mile Christmas drive. So they're doing all kinds of cool stuff out there. But so I, I know down in the tune, uh, I Tracy and I have been there before years and years and years ago. They have the uh, light fest in the in the park. Uh, which is very beautiful, and I know you're not far from that. Are they doing something similar to that drive-through uh, lighting every every year? Oh, I don't. I know uh, they do it because I I always see it up here. But is your friend trying to do that with the up lights? He's buying from uh, sheds. No, or? He's actually in um, Quincy, Illinois, is where there's a huge uh, place up there. I think it's over a mile, if not too long, and. So, yeah, they've got a big pond over there that they're doing stuff. They're doing some stuff with waterproof moving heads. And I don't know where they got those because I don't think Shed has waterproof moving heads. But they got, uh, I think you said 10 moving heads. So, I, I know American DJ has IP rated. I think Chave does too because uh, Howie Darkstar uh, from the Dish Jockey News, um, very, very uh, cool guy to talk to. Um, they're looking at uh, he did the lighting last year up in upstate New York, and it looks like he's going to do it again this year. And that lighting show is outside. It's for basically like Junior Olympics, and it's a big thing. And uh, the DJ who's running it, um, he buys a lot of IP rated stuff because it's outside, it's snow and stuff like that. So and I know I I know that a lot of the stuff that they got was American DJ stuff. So it, it's one of the things that um, I know they're out there. I, I don't know American DJ does because again, I how he has talked about it and how he showed about it. Um, so it, it's it's one of the things they are out there. Um, but uh, I'm sure Shed doesn't have one. Um, it's not to say that they ain't going to. Um, Davis said there's a lot of new stuff coming next year. Uh, there's things that they were supposed to have come out this year that never did come out. So I don't know why, but. What did Matt say? It was so, small only. It, we're, we're, he's conversating in the background. <laughs> well, but yeah, I'm it's, it's, yeah, I'm in two places. I'm, I'm in two places <laughs> at once. Uh, again, recorded show for another, another, uh, for another thing. So um, they're not live. They, the, their chat's live. Their chat's live, but their the chat's video live. is not. Yes. And okay. the thing is, it's an honor to be there and it's an honor to work with some of those people, everyone over there. Um, and it's one of the things that, you know, talking about stuff over there is is great. Here, we, we can do a little more deep, deep diving. Uh, it's, a, it's a totally different format, totally different uh, thing. But it, it's one of the things that working with... Uh, a lot of the uh, great people over there. Um, I, I, I tell you, I do learn a lot, and it, it's great information to have. And I will say that you know, when you see manufacturers out there, um, such as you know Sheds, and I'm sure everyone else is running into the same thing. Chave, American DJ um, for lighting, because a lot of them buy you know get stuff from manufacturers in China. I think this is going to screw up a lot of things, and. It's going to create a lot of havoc. Uh, Matt, now on you, you ordered some stuff. Are you seeing stuff coming in late? Are you getting stuff finally? You uh, know, I know you ordered stuff from RCF. and We're officially 60 days out as of today for RCF is what they said. So uh, we'll see. Um, but, I mean, uh, not really. I mean, I, I think it's kind of rebounded a little. The harder stuff to get is, like, covers covers for speakers and stuff like i just got the the subwoofer now that i've been using for the past couple of weeks is the icoa sub from uh ld systems and that thing is amazing and that's my new 18 inch sub um there, and, there's a couple there's a couple companies you can turn to there's one company in michigan uh yeah, covers. Kuki, Kuki doesn't do business with me 
they uh their ceo is uh let's just say he's not the most mature person in the world and we had some words exchanged i mean basically i tried to return something i tried calling them for weeks nobody answered their phone i just sent it back i didn't use it and didn't hear anything for a couple weeks and so i filed a claim with my credit card company and he comes at me very aggressively and unprofessionally and he's like oh well we don't want to do business with somebody like you who thinks that we're a fraud company i'm like no, it's not my fault nobody's answering the phones to authorize the return. Like, I emailed, I, I called, I did everything. Nobody was getting back to me. Like, anyway. They tried, um, they tried to screw you over is what it sounds like. Yeah, but I, I don't really like their covers. They're not um, super padded or thick, and they fit a little too snug. So I have a couple other companies. But anyway, I, I was able to get one from LD Systems uh, directly from Adam Hall Group over in New York. It just took about a week and a half, two weeks. But, um, yeah, it's... Certain stuff's out there, but other stuff is is not. Um, I think it's rebounded a little bit um, supply chain wise, but I think you have to kind of sort stuff a little bit. It's it seems like the manufacturers that are local, like someone like Mackie. I mean, my I had a thump go that um, it fell down um, and it fell right on the through pin where I had it connected to another thump go. It broke the pins in there, stopped working the battery compartment broke so the battery i had to duct tape in there and um i sent them pictures because it's under warranty i sent them pictures they sent me a brand new unit like between me shipping it out and getting the replacement took less than a week so uh, companies like mackie i mean they've got a lot of a lot of stuff uh but yeah rcf is uh, there there's stuff out there it's just i don't know it's uh, i haven't had too many issues but i, I also I, I haven't placed my new lighting order from China yet for like, I'm, I'm looking to get some new up lights and some other cool uh, effect fixtures that uh, I don't want to reveal just yet, but they're, they're pretty uh, good. That's another thing we're talking about China, both lighting is out of China. So I'm sure Rick Webb's feeling the, um, you know, people, what she's been advertising, you know, that they're having sales, but it's both lighting being affected because they're in China. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's like most most lighting manufacturers are going to be in China, except for maybe uh, a few. There's some in Europe, and uh, you know, like Ape Labs or German um, um, Astera Lights. They get some stuff from Germany, some stuff from from China. But China is, you know, even if you look at the automotive area with with automotive parts and with uh, semiconductors. I know I just read an article. One of the big companies uh, that makes semiconductors in uh, Taiwan is building and expanding a plant they just, they just built here. Um, not too long ago, they're they're basically doubling the size of the plant, uh, and they know it's going to make it's be more expensive. And that's for chips for like uh, iPhones and stuff like that. And they know it's it's be uh, more of a higher price item just because being built here. But it, it's it's one of the things that we're relying upon. China to get uh, stuff, and uh, today I just called to Sweetwater to order a small little uh, uh, mixer, a Yamaha small little uh, six-channel mixer, and they don't have it. They won't have it until the end of December, and I need it for uh, a, a job coming up in you know two weeks, and I'm like I I, I can't wait, so I had to get. Uh, uh, this is right here. They're pretty nice. Yeah, that's kind of what the size I was looking for. But I, I, I wanted something that has um, internal power, not a 12 volt, uh, 12 uh, volt, volt uh, wall wart. Um, and uh, the one from uh, Yamaha does have it. Uh, but the thing is that it's not a huge wall wart. I didn't want to take a lot of space up in the rack, but uh, so I went to an Ellen Heath, which has an internal power supply and you know a rubber plug. But it, it's 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 little things like that I've noticed. You know, it's hard to get a hold of, and even ordering things um, for Christmas presents. Uh, some of the stuff I'm ordering and seeing or looking at, it's like you know. Yeah, you could buy it, but you're probably waiting. It may be here by Christmas, and uh, like I said before, it, it's it's a hard thing, especially for us as DJs. We're trying to plan for our 2023 season, and even today, I just got an email uh, just before coming on air uh, for 
two wedding shows in January. And I have hooked, I'm already signed up for one wedding show and I'm going to sign up for two more for January. And I got one uh, for February and one for March, as well as I have a wedding in February. So my first wedding started off 2023 is in February, which we've always, you know, started off, you know, later, we always started off the end of March, beginning of April with stuff. But the thing is that this year coming up, I, I start February and I still have two more, uh, three more jobs to go this year, including, you know, uh, December 31st. So it's, it's one of the things that, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to buy too much stuff because I have a lot of stuff, right? I don't want to add to the pile, but it's like you run into things you need. And it seems that, you know, I, I know Matt has ordered some stuff for his business. And I know I've ordered some stuff. And even like my uh, Maui 5 Goes, which I actually just used this past weekend, when I ordered those in last last year, I didn't get them until, what, uh, uh, what, uh, I want to say March of this year, and then the covers came, what was it, I want to say June, and I ordered everything at the same time. Uh, you know, it, it's one of the things that, it, it's hard with the supply chains to get stuff and have things that you're not, you know, you're, you're not trying to rely upon, but you need to use and you want to use, you want to have the right, the right equipment and not halfway it. And that to me is the important part, you know, and I know Matt, Matt's a perfectionist. I know you're a perfectionist too. I know both of you guys have good light shows. Uh, I try to have a good light show and having all that equipment there that you need for it. I don't know, 2023 may be another rough year of getting gear. You know, I, I, I've heard for, uh, you know, before for cars, 2024 is a year for vehicles. 2023 is going to be another year like 2022. Yeah. Um, Matt, you were talking about your new LD uh, subs or your 18 inch. Is that a dual 18 or a single? Is Matt picking me up? It's last Tuesday. No, Matt, Matt's, li Matt's listening to something. <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm on, the, I'm on the phone. I'll answer you in a second. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do jobs. Eh, you know what? Not so bad. If a job com call comes in when we were, you know, doing stuff. This is the real world. We're working DJs. It's not like, you know, we're just sitting around not doing anything. And you know, some, you know, you, uh, Nathan, you have a couple irons in the fire. You have your landscaping business. You have your snowplow business, which now you're into snow plowing. Not yet. There hasn't okay, been really snow. And then you have your DJ business. You have like three irons in the fire. And then Matt again. He he SoCal. They don't get time off for snow. Actually, so I've got four because I also run three four three studios, which where I'm at now. Um, you know, I, I do I help uh, Matt or my Matt Mike with his YouTube stuff. Um, I, you helped me um, out too, which I appreciate. I appreciate that thumbnail. Yeah, you, I got buggy um, for some more because it was my awesome. girlfriend's my <laughs> girlfriend's channel. I just put a video up there, so if you haven't done so, go check out Mom Chat with Jess. Uh, she's, she's kind of a vlog channel. She vlogs stuff we do and all that, and then I edit the videos. Um, what else? Uh, so, so Matt, the uh, 18 yeah. that you ordered, was it a dual 18 or single 18 for LD? Uh, single 18. They don't make a dual 18. Um, but that thing, I'm going to sit, like, you can't let the specs, like, specs don't mean anything anymore, I believe. Uh mm -hmm. Even max SBL wattage, nothing, none of that means anything because this thing, I swear to you, is louder than the QSC 118. It's louder than the KW 181. It's louder than my RCF. Not louder than the duels, obviously, but I mean, this thing, it it says it goes to 35 hertz, but this thing is kicking at like insanely low bass tones that really only my dual 21 could i mean it's 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 a monster it's 900 bucks uh it's it's yeah i'm blown away by it and it's extremely loud i haven't gotten it to clip yet um it's just a great sub and how heavy uh, is it it's heavy it's about 80 pounds um but maybe 85 but i it's uh obviously it doesn't come with casters but the rcf casters work on it and so i still have like when I ordered my dual 18s from RCF, they sent me the casters first because that was the only thing that was in stock. So I just put a pair of those on there and it works great. Um, and then I have the cover for it. But yeah, it's a single 18. Um, 
yeah it 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 thumps and what's great is it carries the bass far it has a really like long throw and it's because it's kind of like a it's a tapered pattern at the back so it's it's wide up front and then it's tapered at the back and then the other cool thing is the way it's designed it has handles on the grill on the front on the very like top and bottom of where the grill is so like mm. if you're like maneuvering it is so easy with those two handles you're easily just you know i'm able to pick it up put it in my trunk and get it in the right position and, yeah usually you know, usually most manufacturers put hey, handles on the side which are great or they put one handle on top in the center, which is sometimes great, but sometimes like, uh, yeah, having two handles right there by the front of the grill where you're going to move stuff, great. very intelligent, very intelligent. L LD systems really, again, the Maui Fives really um, impress me a lot, and they impress a lot of people for the sound. And it, again, the Maui Fives are not as loud as uh, have thus don't have the same level of volume as the RCF J8s. But even, you know, again, the wedding this past week with 60 people in a decent-sized room, uh, and again, if you guys seen on Instagram, the pictures, uh, it, it's one of the things that um, those those are, those um, J8, I'm not J8, those uh, My 5 Goes, they more than cover the room. No one complained about, you know, having not having enough sound or hearing anything clearly. And that, to me, is the important stuff is, if you're going to buy something, you're going to buy a subwoofer, you're going to buy a speaker, you want to have that clarity there. You want to have that cleanliness when you do stuff and having it. And I'm glad that LD had that subwoofer in there for you. And it adds to your uh, your cornucopia of speakers and, and subwoofers you have. But again, I, you know, you need to have the right tool for the job. And you have multiple jobs. You have, I know you do a lot of gigs outside. I know you do school gigs. You do a lot of weddings. And, you know, it's just like, you know, uh, Nathan there, he has a lot of different gigs. He has a lot of different looks because depending on what's going on, he has that huge trust system with all those lights he can do, make it look feel like it's a nightclub. And then you got, you know, if you've got a small little wedding, he can still make it nice, look nice, but also, you know, bring down nice little sized lights and have it look professional. And that, that to me is the big thing is, is, is how we make stuff look. Both you guys are very, very visual people, which I enjoy. I, like, I enjoy watching. I like the way Matt Matt makes his lights. I, I don't, they're just something about you, Matt. I, your lights look very clean on your dress. The way you mount them, <laughs> they're sideways. They're how you do your 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 strobe lighting. Or I, I think you have a very nice lighting setup, Matt. Thank oh yeah, you. I try. It, it's it's very. I, very I'm I'm gonna get with you sometime to, to get all that set up or control an old DMX and get all that set up. That's that's in in the works sometime. Well, you, you guys know each other. You guys can you know talk to each other if you guys need a Zoom room. I know someone who has a Zoom channel. And I mean a Zoom area you can go into and talk. So <laughs> you guys can go um, there and talk. But it, it's 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 one of the things that again with the holiday season coming up and planning for everything. You know, high engagement season technically started on Thanksgiving. This is when uh, a good majority of people who are looking to get married are getting engaged. And they're finding that other person that they want to be, in, you know, married to, and getting down on one knee and asking each other or asking whoever um, to marry them. And what is your plan? What is your goals to reach out to those people? Are you doing anything different in marketing right now than you normally would throughout the year? I, I, you know, are you doing a little different? Anything with uh, talking to people? Are you talking to any venues? What, what are the things you're doing differently than right now? I'm just, what do you call it? Um, putting, uh, like, I made some flyers that I could post throughout the winter and just saying, hey, it's, you know, engagement season and sooner, you know, soon you're going to be looking for, you know, planning your wedding and let, let's make picking out your DJ the easy, you know, contact me and we can, or something. I don't remember how I said it, but, you know. Just kind of giving people, you know, the guys that are thinking, hey, I'm going to be asking this girl on Christmas Eve to marry me. You know, I've already got the back of my head. You know, I want to hire a DJ or I want to hire Matt or I want to hire Buddy or I want to hire Mike or I want to hire DJ Fire, you know. Uh, uh, but I, I am going to try to hopefully, weather permitting, 
do one of those wedding shows this year. Yeah, I've got um so I have or next year. There were three, I think I mentioned this last time. There were three companies that do wedding shows here. One of them got sold. So now there's just two. Um and one of them has three shows in January and I'm actually DJing their daughter's sweet 16 next this weekend. Uh the owner of the company. So we get hooked up with special deals to where it's like all three shows for a corner 10 by 10 booth for 1400 bucks or something like that. Wow. Uh, that is a deal. Yeah. So, and normally, guys, you know, normally, normally the booths are like a thousand dollars a piece yeah. per show. So when, when you guys, what do you call it? Um, go to these, you know, shows. I've never done one. Um, I don't even know if I've ever been one, but what, do you, do you take music? Do you take like a speaker to play music or show your? No, your I, I have a promo video that we run on a loop. Um, we bring our photo booth uh, and it's working so people can actually use it and see it uh, with the flower wall, which always draws people in. And I've got the promo video and then I've got a little cocktail table with my paperwork, my pricing. And uh, we have koozies. I, I have custom koozies that we made um for people to take uh as well as you know they can take the pricing sheet and i kind of give them my little spiel i show them the video i've got a tablet there that i could kind of show like oh this is what you bring any like. trusting in or anything with a few lights hanging on it just to no nah, i don't really do any lighting i mean we we have our neon sign i put the tv on a truss and throw the flowers underneath it um but you know you kind of want to keep it simple but also impressive like you don't just want to there's other companies that just have like a banner and a guy standing there or like there's a company that has a DJ console with a DJ mixing and it's like, okay, well, all of us can mix. What else can you show me? So um, and it's just it's a numbers game. You know, I don't I don't look like my process with wedding shows is like I'm trying to get as many leads as possible. I don't I don't wait for a lead list. I have printouts where I say, you know, like as I'm talking to them, say, hey, you know, would you mind filling this out? Uh, that way we can contact you. That way we know you came from the show. We'll give you the special pricing. Um, and then the next day, I'll either email or text them, reach out, and then get a conversation going. But if I actually see somebody that's more legitimately interested and it's like, oh, wow, I want that. I see your video. I want that. Then I'll like make a note and be like, hey, great meeting you yesterday. Uh, I know you're super interested. Let's talk about pricing. Let's see if we can get this locked in. Um, and usually that's maybe five out of the... 70 or so leads that i uh get are like ones that are legitimately the, ready to the place here at least the, the better place here that does the wedding show in effingham uh with, it's only 250 dollars for a 10 by 10 square foot or square yeah. area which is pretty great i think it's two, maybe it's only 200 i can't remember but um at the you pay that and then they give you a list of right, all right. the contacts at the end of the night with their phone numbers, emails, all that. So you can contact, you know, you can, they can, you know, I don't know how that works, but you get a list of everyone that was there. I guess they have those to are, sign up or register. Those are, those are okay, but the way that I see those is that those, everybody that attends a bridal show, like they're going to get bombarded with 100 emails Monday morning from everybody. So that's why, like, I make it a point to get their phone numbers, and I text them, you know. I text them the next day, hey, this is Matt from Solstice Entertainment. It was great meeting you at the show yesterday. Uh, we were the, you know, if I just happen to throw something in there, like, oh, you know, we were the booth with the floral backdrop or whatever, and then um, kind of go from there, because they're getting bombarded with 100 emails. Like, but, right. but like, that's, to, that that's point, though, to that point, though, I did a wedding show, um, and I got a lead list, uh, like, every wedding show and this time i was like you know what screw it let me just send an email to all 450 and i booked four weddings from it <laughs> and i had never talked to these people so you right. know it, sometimes it works uh but on, I, your, I don't know. on your on your video that you have uh that you're showing these people on your trust what are you showing just clips, it's a, it's from, like other, a, clips from other events or yeah it's it's like a two minute promo video that i've pieced together um uh, to music it's coordinated and it's footage from some videographers. It's footage I've taken. It's some footage from gig logs. It shows a little bit of everything, but uh, that's my task for this month is to make a new version of that, um, which I really don't want to do, and I'd rather pay somebody to do, but I'm probably <laughs> going to do it myself. But, um, yeah, so that's that's my task. Um, I'm not looking forward to it, but it's 
that's what I show. Um, and they see that and they're like, Oh wow. You know, that's cause it's dynamic, you know, but I try to get people to be like, Oh, come to my Instagram, come to my YouTube. Um, I don't know. We're doing all right for next year. We've got, I've got 39 weddings booked already. So, um, you know, I, I think, uh, I'd like to be at 50 by the end of the year, but, um, I don't know. We'll see. What's, what's the most weddings you've done in a year? Uh, this year I'm on, track to do 64 oh, not bad. so uh, yeah we, I did, this I year did we, we got this year we're at 47 this is the most usually between 30 and 35 usually we get a year so I, I i'd love i'd love if a couple more dropped in my lap that includes the the one that did drop in our lap uh, this past Saturday, uh, that we, we basically, uh, you know, got a contract from them only a few weeks prior to the the wedding, but it's it's one of the things that you try and get as many jobs as possible, and it, it all adds up. And you, you know, uh, Matt, and you know, I know, I don't, I, I don't know what you do. At, I don't know at the wedding show if you get a lot of people coming in just want to photo booth. And you'll do just photo booth, or do you? Uh, they have to get a, a DJ package to get the photo booth. Uh, we get some, like the one I did. The one I did on Friday, they found me at the wedding show back in September. Uh, they liked the flower wall backdrop, and they booked me, and that was like a nine hundred and fifty dollar photo booth package, you know, for three hours. So, so you would um, do a photo booth separate from the DJ yeah. side. I I charge extra for it. I charge like one hundred and fifty bucks extra if it, if they're not booking it with the DJ. Uh, so, Matt, if I needed someone to come run a, a photo booth at a wedding, would you do it? <laughs> not in, not in Chicago or wherever you are over there. He's south of Chicago. Uh, he's way south of he's Chicago. He's, he's See, that's the south. <laughs> I my you know I get amazed when I I show up at these weddings that like you know I booked. Because, like, we didn't start offering the photo booth till April, but I have a bunch of weddings that, like, had already booked a photo booth before that for this fall and this season. And, like, the guy comes in with, like, a little cart, and it's everything he needs set up. And here I come in with my photo booth. I have a giant SKB case for the booth, a big four-foot-wide case that holds the box, the printer, the accessories, the paper, uh, another husky tote for all the props, uh, another bag for the backdrop and the frame. Like it's, it's a, it's a couple trips worth. And I'm just like, how do I downsize to get in there in one trip? But I don't know. I'm still able to set it up pretty quick. It's just. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing around here. A lot of DJs want to be simple. They don't want to, you know, like when, when me and Mike were working together, you know, we were talking about doing like big show productions or whatever we were talking about doing at one time. Um, I was wanting to go big. And I think he was kind of wanting to go big, but then he realized how much of the pain the butt it is, setting all that stuff up, tearing it all down. Mm. And he was just like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. I, you know, he's older than me. and I, I get mean, it. It's, a, it's probably a pain with how much stuff you guys bring to weddings as it is now. <laughs> I look well, at those setups and I'm like, holy shit, I don't want to take all that down. Well, that's, oh, one, reason, that's one of the reasons why I we, we have a couple of employees for, with us um, is because when we get an elaborate wedding, even with the two of us, Tracy and I, doing everything, you may run into the time crunch of not getting everything set up in time. Or if you have three setups, like uh, some of the weddings we've done, we've had ceremony in one room, cocktail hour in another area, and a third area, um, the reception. Having you know an extra person there to do stuff, it helps out. And... It, 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 Mike, um, I know he he has a younger son. It's, he's a little too young, but even if he helped out once in a while and he started learning stuff, if he wanted to, his wife helps out. I don't, I'm not for sure if she if he has to explain, you know, every time, you know, this is how we're doing, or if she's kind of it's clicked in her head. This pin, this screw has to go here. This is how we do this. I've seen it in some of these gig logs, and I'm wondering, like, this. I mean, like, I've got a guy that helps me. Uh, I've got some people that, you know, my, my buddy Zach that has the entertainment uh, business that does, you know, wedding tables and chairs and, and stuff like that, tents and all that. Uh, sometimes we've actually been, like, I've DJed a wedding that he's brought tents and tables and chairs at. So he'll come to pick the tables and chairs up. He'll help me tear down, and then I'll help him load the tables and chairs up. So it kind of works out. I, I think we had three weddings this year like that that happened. Um 
But uh, I will say, you can only hit your head on the top of an enclosed trailer so many times before you realize <laughs> you got a duck every time you walk into the trailer. Sometimes you got to bump your head once in a while. But it, it, it's it's one of the things that I um, I really think that a wedding show uh, like Matt, I'm I'm very similar with that. I really think that the DJs bringing in audio equipment and Matt, I'm sure you've seen it. The battle of DJs break out. You have one guy that's loud, annoying, and then also another guy hears how loud he is, so he has to outdo the first guy and ramps up his volume and thinks he's you know DJ DJ Slick or DJ Grandmaster Flash or whatever. And then you have another guy who comes along. And goes, oh well, these two DJs are doing. It. I'm going to do it, and it turns into a DJ battle with multiple DJs. And I just don't. I just don't feel that it's a good, good thing to do. And I just I, I look at that. I, and go, I, had, I had that same thing happen this year uh, for the Fourth of July uh, deal I did out at um, uh, the uh, Legion there in Toledo. Uh, I came in, was getting set up. You know, I, I like to make sure my speakers, my subs, my, my board, computer, everything's dialed in before I start. So it was still daylight. There was, you know, some other stuff going on outside, maybe some softball or something. I can't remember. But they had another little DJ that had been playing music. He was using two cheap powered Walmart brand speakers. Had them cranked and everything. I mean, they had lights around them and all this. And, yeah. and you could tell they were just cheap. Um, they were two probably 10 or 12 inch speakers on wheels and, you know, whatever. But I got in there, got my subs turned on, turned my amp on, started to get everything dialed in. I wanted to get the bass dialed in because, you know, I'm not aware if my sub uh, dials get moved and I don't want to hit it hard and it clip real hard. So I cranked it up real hard. Well, the other guy thought I was trying to overpower him and came over there and got in my face and started cussing at me and all this, telling me to, you know, turn it down, shut it off. I don't know why you're here. I'm DJing this. I'm like, well, I'm not. You got hired from the, you know, park administration to, to have music out here. I got hired to the Legion. I'm not here for the park. I'm here for the Legion, you know. And he's like, so he went. You know, griping whoever hired him. Why is he here? Blah, blah, blah. You're trying to, you know. And I'm like, I'm just simply trying to make sure my system's good, that, that I'm all set up and ready to go, you know. And that was the night that nothing really turned out. We had a storm coming in. He wanted me to tear everything down and take it all inside and set it up. I said, you're looking at an hour tear down and set back up time, um, if not longer. Um, and then he also did, the, uh, the guy of the Legion, uh, didn't even want to hardly pay me. My, my full price. He's like, well, you didn't play very long. I'm like, that's not my fault. No, you know, that's the hard thing around here. Legions, bars, uh, anything that's not a wedding won't pay you around here until the end of the night unless you got someone that you know real well. Um, I know Mike, when he worked up there at the uh, Champs, he waited around until like the last person was gone and then, you know, the owners would stand around, yap and drink and talk and Mike would have to go, you know, he'd have to Hint had him, hey, I'm ready to go. Where's my money? You know, but they eventually did get paid. He'd have to stand around and wait, you know, and that's just how people are around here. We can't get, you know, I've, I've had comments on that video saying, I don't get paid, you know, I don't show up unless I get paid. Well, that's not how they do it around here, and I'm sure that's like that in other places. I uh, started, we, we get when you know, for collecting payment and stuff like that, we get uh, our payment usually. Um, Usually, most people usually pay beforehand. If not, it's day of at the yeah. beginning. But I have contracts now, so you know if they ever want that's to the important part. Make sure it's in your contract. contract. I need you to sign this. I need you to pay me. Yeah, you know at least fifty percent to to book your day, and then yep. uh, if you don't pay me the rest, I don't show up. And, and that's that's the important stuff. Because... Of having your contract, that's important stuff. My the, other thing is, I'll have people that like. Uh, a lot of bride and grooms are doing grand exits. And so what I used to do was like at the end of the night, like, Hey, you know, I need to collect the money uh, because I used to do it that way on purpose because at the end of the night, when they're paying me, they're more likely to give you a better tip because they're paying you at the end of the night versus like right. they pay you ahead of time and have a tip already set aside. You know, it's like, so, but now I've just, so many people are doing grand exits that like, I don't want to have to bother the bride and groom, like as they're getting ready to leave, 
like, or as they're hanging around at the venue, I just want to be like, Hey, you know, I usually just remind them like the week of, I just collect payment week of now. I'm just saying, you know, Hey, you know, I'm, let's take I'm care of the remaining balance. So we don't have to deal with it on the night of, and they're more than happy. I'm, to. I'm 30 days out now. I mean, they got to pay me their deposit. You know, if they cancel, it also says in there, if you cancel within, if you cancel within six months of due date, um, you get, I don't remember how much my insurance company went over it with me um, and kind of helped me get it all right up. Uh, Matt or uh, Mike helped me with some of it too. Um, he's got one, but um, you know, they, they pay me if, if they cancel within six months, you know, you get a portion of the league refund. If it's before or after six months, you don't get any of that money back. Um, and I also have to be paid within 30 days of the event as well. Well, yeah. And, and your time, your time is money. And that's the thing is that that's why with wedding shows, <clears throat> I don't want to bring in sound gear. I don't want to bring in um, stuff I don't need to bring in. I bring in some up lights. I bring in usually the, uh, the I bring a DJ booth in for people to see it so I can up light it so people can see the lighting. I put a TV on there. Um, you know, we have our banners. We have our, uh, our stuff. And we go through and talk to people, have our tablets. And then we have video. And the video is basically... You know the video I, I capture right at back, weddings. Guys. I'll be right back. No problem. It's the video I capture at weddings, so it is those that video I I have. I play that there, and the TV has a little bit of volume to it, so people can hear the song. But they right. guys basically kind of put their ear close to the TV. I don't know if you do the same thing like that, Matt. They have a little bit of music, you know, kind yeah, of the backgrounds it, off the TV speakers, but not. A it's so loud. Isn't it? It's so loud in those places that, like, the even if I put the TV at like a hundred volume it's not oh yeah you're not so yeah. i it's more just a visual but yeah i'm gonna put something together God, i really don't want to like i spent i literally spent probably a week putting that other one together well not a week well a good like 20 hours worth of work all together putting that other one together for like a two minute clip and most of it not most of it but like a couple parts of it were stuff that i received from other videographers that sent me a little recap type thing so now i'm like shit i have to do this myself so i may just find somebody to pay to do it but also like there's so much content that i would have to like comb through to find the best clips to put in there that i'm just like i don't even know i i have i have some really cool clips i and, and you know again i look at the cool clips i captured over the year uh on the files go through stuff and i'll build you know, I'll, I'll build it. I'll, you know, I'll take uh, probably, um, again, this weekend, it's the first weekend I, 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 I've i had nothing to do, no customer reading earth of that. Um, so I'm going to take some time and probably work on it this week and see what happens, you know, work on this stuff and see. Um, so for uh, 2023, which again, I know, we have some time before Christmas, and uh, for pro, uh, for a program note, uh, we'll have a show this week. Um, we'll have a show on the 5th and the 12th, and then we won't have a show until the new year. So the 5th and the 12th of December, we'll have shows, and then... Are you... What, what about that Tuesday, the last Tuesday of the month, like the Tuesday after Christmas? No, that's between Christmas and New Year's, and you know we're gonna we're gonna take a little bit of time off. That way, everybody can enjoy themselves, their friends and family, and get their uh, stuff together. <laughs> and that way, you know, it, it's 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 a little break. So the fifth and twelfth we'll have, but the week of Christmas and the week after Christmas, we'll come back in January. Then, so I, I will tell everyone again: if you're watching this live, if you're watching this on YouTube, so you know ahead of time you're watching this live. You know what that again? We have next week and the week afterwards. We'll have the show, and that will be off for uh, two weeks. That way, you give everyone time to relax and enjoy everything and uh, get stuff ready. But I, I, looking at twenty twenty three, I'm I'm very very hopeful that uh, you know we'll still be able to get the gear. But looking forward with uh, the supply chain again, especially seeing the news of China, it's very. Uh, it's, it's very scary uh, looking at stuff. And I think that if you're looking for things uh, either for the business or for personal, for gifts or anything like that, I would recommend people not to wait. Um, 
I would look basically look at um, look at that stuff and say, hey, get it. But I'm glad to hear that you guys are ordering stuff and getting stuff pretty quickly. I'm glad to hear, Matt, your RCFs are, you said, 60 days out? That's what uh, IDJ now said. It went from estimated of they'll probably be end of December to now 60 days out officially from RCFs. That's what they're saying. Does, does, does RCF come from China? Is that why they're No, they're that? Italy. Yeah. Oh, Italy. They're it's Italy. They're your, your, it's European, just, but... It's just their big stuff because they they released a whole swath of art 945, 935, 912s, 922As, like all of the art series, like they released all at once to the point where Guitar Center had them, like Guitar Center carrying RCF, like, yeah. And so, but it's the big stuff that's just special order anyway. That yeah, like, the sound, you know, the sound you know, store or music store, whatever it's called. Yeah, I mean, even, they even, have a lot of RCF stuff. Even if it wasn't during, like, when I got the 21s, that was before supply chain was as horrible as what it was or what it is now. Even those took about two and a half, three months. Um, and that's because they were, uh, you know, sitting on a ship. But, like, they had sh sent out really quickly because, again, all it is is a cone inside a giant wooden box with an amp. But how hard is that? Yeah, so but they hand they hand speaking, build those, you know. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. When, you, when you do those, you know, custom orders like that, you know, all those manufacturers are going to custom build them. You know, LD systems, you know, that eighteen, I'm sure, you know, again, a lot of hands on. Versus, you look at a lot of the other speakers. You know, speakers are a little probably a little easier to do, especially a poly cabinet. They're probably they're much quicker to do on assembly line versus those subwoofers. They can. They could take some some work because you got put uh, you know Matt in there you know uh, you got to put uh, you got you got to put a lot of stuff together so I, I'm not going to complain too much about that. Matt, but, what uh, what did you get for your dual? Don't you have dual eighteen R or RCFs? I have twenty ones for twenty one. Okay, what did you get for one of those? Like how much did I pay? Yeah, well, like what were they? What did you had? Has the price of them gone down? I'm looking at one, uh, the dual eighteen. Uh, Thirty-seven hundred dollars. Does that sound about right? Uh, that's pretty cheap for the dual eight. That's probably a used one. Um, it says brand new for the RCF dual eighteen. RCF, uh, it's the what model. Eight, eight, eight AS forty-four hundred. The eight thousand six. Eight thousand eight. Oh no, that's a different sub. The eight thousand six is the dual twenty. The dual eighteen. Uh, you said it's the eight thousand what? Eight thousand eight forty four hundred. Eight thousand eight AS forty four hundred. It's thirty seven hundred dollars, and there's uh flat uh freight. They're shipping in freight. Is that how you get yours? No, I figured they go UPS. Oh no, this is the different. This is a different one. This is a this is the new one that they came out. This is the this is the middle level model between their um this i i heard this at nam and i wasn't that impressed um it's their new it's this is like the mid-range that's like one step down from the uh the 8006 the 8006 is a 5000 watt powered dual dual 18 um so yeah if you look up the 8006 i don't know what the price is now yes yeah, so the price of the 8006 is 6 grand when i bought it it was 49.99 so 10 grand is what I paid. So it's gone up by a thousand dollars. That's the thing is that's the other thing I, I'm seeing on everything from vehicles to DJ gear. Mm -hmm. Prices have gone up quite a bit on things. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how much it gone up. It's not just inflation. It's, you know, supply yeah. and demand. Even the uh, JBL VRX, you know, single 18s, 1500 Watts are, $2,400. Yeah. What was that LD system? What did you pay? How much you pay for the LD system uh, sub? Uh, 900 bucks. Uh, where did you get it from? Zounds. Zounds? Yeah. Zounds got stuck? <laughs> Zounds, has, Zounds has a lot of stuff. I know, Zounds, I know they do. They they do. Um, they all, and and you could do the pay-as-you-play plan up to, up to $3,000 of uh, pay-as-you-play, no credit check. Equal monthly payments up to 12 months, sometimes up to 18 months, and you could finance up to it's not even financing, it's just like a payment plan. Yeah, 949.99. They got them in stock right now. You can get them, get them by Friday. 
Well, there you go. There's a stocking stuffer for you. You know, stock an 18-inch uh, subwoofer from LD System per yeah, so it does, DJ Salsas it, into your it stock. Does. So it's it's uh so it's a twenty four hundred watt peak six hundred watt RMS uh goes down to twenty nine hertz. Uh, what's the uh, what's the SPL? Uh, I think it's one twenty nine. Uh, no, one thirty three max SPL. So it's it's the same rating as my old RCF single eighteen, but I mean, man, this thing kicks ass. It it really you're I, very I, impressed I, with it. That's, that's I might buy a, I might buy a second. Uh, for no reason, but I might say <laughs> just just because like the the thing is is like when I do nice weddings where I bring out the the nice facade because my standard setup is the two speaker poles, the five panel facade, and then the subwoofer under the table behind the facade. It works great because the sub centered between the two speakers, and it's just a it's a thin piece of fabric, so the base passes right through it. When I bring that plexiglass facade with my nicer setup, it acts as like a, a drum. What do you call that? Like a plexiglass drum cage. Yeah, where it just stops all sound from coming through. So uh, any sub that I put underneath that, all the bass just dies. So if I want a nicer, if they purchase that nicer setup, I need to do like the subs on each side with the speaker poles with a speaker on top. Um, can, you, can you cut out on the bottom? Is there like a bottom panel on your facade that you can cut out and put this piece of fabric across the bottom? On like mm. three or four of the panels, or mm, you know, take the plexiglass, no. cut half, you know, cut it so far down and put a, you know, put some a piece of wood across. No, because because it, it is. Um, I did purchase the fifth, so it, it's a it's a five panel dragon front boards facade, but I I only use the four. I have the fifth panel still, but it looks the design. I don't know who was what kind of drugs they were smoking on that middle panel, but it looks really <laughs> weird. The, it, the the cross beams and lines look perfect as four panels. The fifth panel is just bizarre. So, like, I, I've seen some guys do, like, a split where they put, like, a sub right in the middle or two subs in the middle, and it perfectly aligns with the way that the their facade is. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. But they yeah, don't make this. That might be a way to go. Put both subs, stack them on top of each other, and put the two panels on each side. And, you know, that way you get lighting and so forth so on. Um that would, that, would, that would be kind of a cool thing to do. No, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm just ran, just randomly looking up different different stuff to see supply chain. I'm seeing a lot of passive stuff and not a lot of powered stuff on here. Well, he has the chips and the amps they can't get. Yep. Like the, thing the is that uh, passive stuff, you know, there's there's still people out there using passive stuff, but majority of the people have gone to powered stuff. But there are there's still there, there's DJs who still use CDs. There's DJs who use passive stuff. It all boils down to what they feel most comfortable with and what they want to use, what they feel is the best thing for them. Hey, I say God bless. Let them use what they want to use. Just like you know, again, we haul up stuff that we like, we prefer, and we want to use the stuff that we use. But uh, we're gonna wrap the, this uh, up for dual, tonight. The dual, uh, the cheapest I could find it. The dual 18-inch JBL, uh, $2,500, and it looks to be January 3rd to January 19th for delivery. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. And that's on Amazon. I couldn't even find a powered one on eBay. It's not worth getting anyway. That sub sucks. I've, <laughs> for, I've got a guy for, here that's for, done for a, lot of, of, DJ a lot of, of the thumbs down. A you, thumbs know what I, you know my opinions on JBL. I hate I everything know. JBL. Well, it, it, I tell you, I've been really wanting to get a dual 18-inch speaker, but I don't know if I want to pay what they're worth right now. I heard, I've been told the dual 18-inch subwoofers sound so good together than two singles. I'm oh, like, yeah. you know, it would be kind of cool to have a dual 18 right in front of my booth and then have my two other 18s on the side for Phil um, or maybe you know, just run the dual. No, you, know, you, you got to do, 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 do what Matt, Matt's got to do. Matt's got to buy a Kraken. Yeah, That's his next stop is a Kraken. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I, I, this this Icoa sub impressed me so much that I canceled my base boss at single eighteen order. Wow! Because, oh, base because, boss? What? Because I'm like, I don't need it. It it was gonna come in like a week, uh, early December, like December seventh, I think, was the date that they were gonna ship it. And I had it on order since early November. And after getting the sub, I'm like, what do I need it for? This sub is plenty loud enough for my smaller gigs. And if I need a bigger sub, my dual eighteens are gonna come in. 
I'll use one of those. And in the meantime, well, I have dual 21s. I don't well, need it. You can an order from Base Boss. Yeah, that's the thing. Even Base Boss, like, they they were waiting on parts and chips. And they're all, all their stuff's made right in L.A. And uh, even they could still relying stuff. upon supply chain stuff and getting stuff from manufacturers. What, from what, did you, what did you order from Base Boss? Like a dual 18-inch sub? No, or or just or? their single, their, their SSP Mark II. Uh, it's their single oh. 18 uh it you know but i i tried their single 15 it sounded great it just didn't uh, you know it sounded great in the booth that's the thing this there's something about this sub i think it's just the way that it's shaped because it's tapered it's oh. not a perfect square or rectangle it's tapered at the back so it really pushes that base forward and has pretty good rejection behind the booth to where you're not really hearing much bass behind the booth but you go out on the dance floor it's thumping and it sounds great so that's my I, I, well, I purchased six different subs, I think, over the past three months, and I finally found one that I like. That's, that's I'm, the thing. Is going, that I, I know you've been buying stuff and saying, no, I don't like it, and returning it. No, I don't like this. I don't like that. And that's the hard thing is you got to find what you like, and it works for you. And I'm have rocking, you like, any, for, Have for, you made for, any videos on your YouTube, Matt, about all these so we can see the difference? Uh, the ICOA sub video will be up um, – yeah, because I've watched some of your other speaker videos, and I know a lot of people's watched some of my speaker videos and lighting videos, and they're like, "Hey, um, you know, I was debating on buying this and watching your video as you know." But yeah, I I have so I have a gig log coming up tomorrow that will have uh, the dual twenty one in it because I didn't have any subs to use for my weekend events a couple weeks ago, uh, so I just brought the dual twenty one for whatever. So we're, um, but, when you use the dual 21, where people like pushed against the wall, like you saw actually <laughs> coming it, at them. It was like, a, oh! <laughs> no, it was, screaming, like, you know, oh, I'm stuck, I can't move. You know, it's funny, the wedding, it, it was for like 60 people. So <laughs> dual 21 was overkill. Again, when we're against the wall like that, it's like, oh, I can't move. It sounded great, um, but yeah, I I, uh, I found table risers that uh, I could bring, push my table up so that I could put the sub kind of like underneath the table more or less. Um, but yeah, and then the Icoa sub video, that'll be out um, on Monday, um, but I don't know. I don't like doing product review videos just because I don't, I don't have time, but like for tops right now, I'm running my Mackies. I, I don't have any power tops. The you can review this stuff in your gig logs. I mean, people yeah, watch your gig logs. Review I your gig logs. Do, but yeah, so I sold the, I don't know, I returned the RCF 945s. Um, my main tops that I'm going to rock with going forward are the EAWs that I used to have, the 12 inch version, which should be here in a couple weeks. But in the meantime, okay. I've just been using those Mackie Thump 212s, which now, well, I returned the 12s and got the 15s just in case I have a smaller gig where I don't need to sub. I have a 15 inch top. But I, it's it's crazy. Those Mackie Dump 212, 215s, they sound so good with a sub. Like, I don't know what they've done with the driver, but, like, people can talk all they want about, like, it being, oh, it's beginner-level speakers. Those things sound so good. The main important thing is that you're happy. DJ Fire, you, you got any more um, information? One, one thing, I've got, a video, I've got a video coming out tomorrow. I actually filmed it once today. I've actually had to film it twice because my camera was set on slow mo and I didn't realize it. And I filmed the whole thing in slow mo. Oh, great! <laughs> Just speed it up. So I, I, I put it on my computer and I'm like, "What is this? <laughs> no!" <laughs> well, if you so want to see that review, make sure you go to DJ Fire's YouTube channel, follow his YouTube channel. He is also have Nathan three four three channel where he has his review of products and also has his landscaping channel. So you follow one, follow the other ones, and his girlfriend's channel. Don't forget to stop by DJ Mike James and DJ Mike uh, and DJ Salsa here, Matt. Uh, and don't forget TBM Productions, my channel as well. On, on hey, I don't know if you noticed, you have surpassed 100 subscribers today. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, yes. You're, you're you're welcome, by the way. Those are some people I told to go subscribe to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. You want to know something guys, crazy? We're going to get, get out of here off, off of uh, Twitch here tonight. Uh, I appreciate you guys out there watching, and I appreciate you guys watching on YouTube. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're on Twitch. Make sure you like, subscribe the channel, put chats, anything down into the chat area on YouTube. If you're watching this on Twitch, I'm glad I saw a few people over here chatting. 
Uh, thank you to uh, Fly Robin and thank you to DJ Adrian, both of you guys talking in the chat. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone else that are watching out there. If you guys get a chance to, go to YouTube, follow them, watch it. Other than that, guys, be safe. We'll see you guys later. Peace.